Hey everyone, it's Mike with Mike Roberts Reptiles. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a video slideshow for you of the different boas and morphs that I work with. Uh, kind of show you, you know, what this gene does with this gene and it kind of explain the genes. Uh, this video is more for like my friends and family, co-workers, you know, kind of explain things. Um, you know, I didn't go to school for this, uh, but you know, I read a lot of books and, and I've been doing this for over 20 years. So I kind of know what I get when I put a certain animal together. So, um, so I'm just going to get started and hope you, you enjoy it. So the first one is, uh, we have here is a, uh, wild type. Uh, this is, uh, or normal. This is co a common, uh, pet store, uh, boa. So if you went into a pet store and you picked one up, uh, this is most likely what you would get. Uh, I got my first one in 1990. I uh, got it at Walmart of all places and kind of was hooked ever since. Uh, I think I bred them for the first time in 95, 96. Uh, it was a great experience uh, and I've kind of been doing it ever since. So I've put a few slides of each, you know, different kinds um, to kind of show you the variations uh, within the category. So. Um, just a normal um, but you can see the uh, you know it's a little difference in appearance uh, the it's more gray um, and as you go down it gets a little redder that's why they're called red tails uh, this is kind of cool you can see how the uh, camouflage goes through the eye uh, I always love that about them um, and you'll see on the normals that you know they, they have a certain uh, saddles uh, with these little white marks on them uh, and they're all different so here's another one um, and sometimes like you can see these two saddles are connected um, sometimes they'll be connected all the way down and this one they start to break up about halfway and then sometimes they're just not connected at all so uh, this one's got a nice red tail too here's just another example of a good looking normal um, with a nice little red tail. I like the little whites in between uh, the red um, and then that little stripe and that so that's pretty cool. And another normal. That's a pretty cool little spot right there. I like little things like that. How that little saddle there is broken. Here's one that I produced this year. It is really light and orange, so the tail's really orange. The saddles have got more of a rusty look to them, uh, so she just kind of stood out, so I'll hang on to her and see what I get out of her. Um, but uh, just a really good looking normal. And you can just see how orange she is and just with great colors. So hopefully I'll raise her up, breed her, and that color will you know come out um, in some of her offspring so here's one that I produced a couple years ago and she came from a really high red female the female just had orange and red just all over she was only uh, one of the normals that uh, had the, the, the orange and the pink uh, but uh, she came out with this super bright tail and just these orange scales everywhere just all over uh, so she was definitely a looker here here she is at about a year um, and you can see how they start off gray but then they turn uh, tan uh, so they all turn tan uh, but the orange just popped out in this girl I mean it just really came through um, and there's the medallion on the side there And here's just a, a headshot of the same animal. And here's that line, camouflage line going through her eye again. It's really cool. <clears throat> okay, the first morph I'm going to talk about is uh, hypomelanistic or hypo. Uh, it is what they call an incomplete dominant trait. So if I take a hypo and I breed it to a normal, I'm going to get around 50% normals and 50% hypos. So it's a 50-50 type deal. So 
And what it does is it reduces the black pigment and enhances the red and it uh, changes up the, uh, the pattern a little bit. Uh, you can see how on this particular photo that the medallions are, are kind of, they don't have that white circle in the middle as much and they're more of a elongated line. Not all hypos are like that, but it, you'll see it a lot in the hypos. So this is the same uh, snake we just were looking at. It's just when it was a baby. Uh, you can see how they change over time in the color. That it, The older they get, the, the redder they get. Uh, so it's kind of a really cool gene to work with. Uh, you can see there's no black around the saddles here. Uh, and that's what you want. You want to reduce the black pigment and get as much red as you can. So here's one, uh, and it does, you know, has black around here. And I'm going to show you later in a what we call super hypo how this has been eliminated as well. But uh, so you have pinks, you have little black around here, you have the 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 bow ties or what we call them. Um, the saddles are more uh, bow tieish. And then the uh, medallions are, instead of circles with dots, they are like more faded out. Here's another hypo. It's got a lot of red in the tail. Um, you can see it's still got some black around here, uh, but you know, eliminating most of the black, and then the red just really comes out. And here's a little cleaner one. Um, Still got the fleck, the black freckles everywhere. Um, you can see it, and it, and that's you'll see it in the hypos. They'll have this black kind of line around here, but you can see the bow ties here. So there's a perfect example of a bow tie. Um, still, you still have that cool camouflage through the eye. Here's one where the uh, you know hypogene broke up the pattern in the tail a little bit. You can have a little weird thing going on here and a little stripe going on. It just does some really cool things. So it's a good gene to work with. Okay, so this is what we call a super hypo. So when you breed a hypo to a hypo, 25% uh, should be what we call super hypos. Uh, now you technically can't sell them as super hypos because you'd have to breed them to prove them out as a super hypo but you can pretty much tell um, by the uh, thinned out saddles here and uh, the lack of black around the uh, saddles down here on the tail so you'll see there is no black around these rings none at all not one bit there's first black spec right there. So that is a uh, most likely a super hypo. So that animal there, if you breed it to a normal, since it's a super hypo, it will produce 100% hypos and no normals. Uh, this is the same animal, just a different uh, shot of it. Um, you can still see there's no black on that tail. <clears throat> okay, and that's just a, a, another shot of the first animal we looked at. Uh, it's my big fe female hypo. Uh, that's when she was gravid last year. Okay, the next morph I'm going to talk about is the motley. Uh, the motley gene is probably my favorite gene there is. Um, I just love the uh, the pattern and the contrast um, and just that silver head and the black eye there. I mean, that's just that's just a great looking snake to me. <clears throat> okay, so this is a uh, a classic motley right here. So you'll see that the pattern is connected all the way through the entire animal here. So. A lot of times you'll see some that start to break up or ride around in here towards the tail. They'll start breaking up. Uh, I don't like that. I like a nice, solid, striped motley. So that's a good example. Here's another one. Uh, this is uh, 
this is kind of a really unusual motley because they normally don't have that stripe without a pattern like through here uh, this is a really cool one uh, this one also came from that high red female so uh, that's why it's got so much red in it here's a couple of my first motleys that I produced I actually kept both these animals um, and they're in my breeders they're part of my breeding program um, just love love the molly gene this one here is um, actually hit annery uh, you can see kind of in the tail it's doesn't have much red and it's kind of faded out um, <clears throat> sometimes the annery gene will will do that so and we'll talk about the annery gene here in a little bit so all the uh, albinos that I work with are a cow line uh, or call um, it's just a line of albino there's a couple of different lines are sharp there's VPI there's bow woman caramel um, but uh, most of everything I work with is this line right here and here's a uh, you know a good example of just a, an albino normal um, now you can still see you know on the saddles the little lines you can still see the medallions this white here is where black would be um, on a normal so it just it's amelanistic I believe it just takes out the black so um, or pigment in general so um, you, they have a lot of contrast as babies and they're really uh, just beautiful animals so here's just another example of a, an albino here's one it's got a little bit more pink in the head uh, and just a little bit more color throughout here's one that has a nice uh, you know stripe on the tail uh, really love uh, striped tails to me it just kind of makes the animal uh, pop so and one more let's see okay so when they grow up they normally don't look as good um, they kind of uh, yellow out um, still great looking animals you know they don't have that same contrast uh, just but um, they do kind of fade so I uh, forgot to talk about the uh, the albino gene it is uh, recessive so in order to get an albino both the parents would have to carry the gene so you'd have to have an albino to a het or a het to a head or albino to an albino um, unlike the hypo gene where you just breed a hypo to a normal and you get half and half this is recessive so both of the parents will need to uh, carry that gene <clears throat> okay so jungle uh, jungle gene is also incomplete dominant so it means you breed a jungle to uh, normal and you should get 50% jungles and 50% normal it doesn't always work out that way sometimes you're gonna get way less and sometimes you're gonna get more uh, that's just the odds um, jungle gene is very um, veritable uh, you can breed a jungle to one female and it's hard to tell which ones are jungles and then you can breed uh, the same jungle to a different female and you get stripes like this so but it is a really good gene to work with and it does some amazing things so it's a picture of the same male uh, there you can just see uh, the stripe um, you can see the little circle on the head um, and these little white scales kind of indicate jungle um, here's another one from the same litter uh, you can see how it just did a little different thing to it uh, you got connecting saddles here uh, you've got uh, normally where you would have these bat uh, batman saddle type things you have blocks so the saddles are now blocky you see that blocky 
and then the tail. So here's a, another jungle. Here's the circle on the head. Um, here's the connected saddles zigzag type here and then your stripes and this white around there. Okay, so annery. This is the only picture of an annery I have. I just picked up an annery this year. Um, I've had annery uh, floating around in my collection, uh, but I've never produced any annery stuff until this year. So it's a really cool gene um, if you mix it with different things. Um, <clears throat> it basically just removes the red pigment out of the animal. So uh, you might think, well, why would you take red out of a red tail boa? <clears throat> But once you start mixing it in with other things, you get some cool stuff. Uh, so I picked this girl up uh, to go with a male I produced that I'll show you here in a little bit. So, oh, back to the anery gene. It is also recessive, so you would need to uh, have two animals that carry the gene. Uh, so now we're going to talk about the combos. Um, the combos, like when you start mixing and matching stuff, uh, this is what you can get. So this photo is uh, one litter. So these are all siblings. Uh, so they're all brothers and sisters. Uh, you've got a jungle here. Uh, this is a hypo jungle. So you got the uh, you know the red pigment and then the zigzaggy stuff. Um, and then this is a hypo motley jungle albino. So there's four genes in that animal. So that one's hard to make. This one here is what you get when you combine the hypo gene with the albino gene. So this is a hypo albino, or what we call a sun glow. Um, and you can see in the face how, how bright this is. The pattern just like really pops and that's why they call it a sun glow it's because it almost looks like it's glowing um, and as this animal gets older that red from the hypo will kick in and it will really just it'll take off and get extremely red here's another sun glow um, you can see the the colors a little different it's orange um, and this one I would say is also a super sun glow because you've got the uh, really thin saddles here um, and the overall appearance is just of a super sun glow so once again you wouldn't know until you bred it so if you if this was a male and you bred it to a female and then all of all the babies were hypos then that would be a super hypo super sun glow same animal, just a different picture, just to show uh, the, you know the different colors. And so we have the motley gene here, up top, and then we have we add the the, yeah, the hypo gene into the motley gene, and it does some really cool stuff too. Um, this one here is a hypo motley; uh, it's its brother, um, and you can see how it just lightened it up. Typically, it changes the whole pattern of the snake, but in this particular litter, it retained the circles on the back and just enhanced the red. So it was really cool uh, to see that. I've never had that happen before. And here's another uh, another example of the same. I got three out of this litter, and they all were the kind of the same. So you can see you still have the classic motley pattern through here. But then the just red is so intense. This is what you normally see when you get a hypo motley. You got a striped tail, you've got blocks all the way here, nothing's connected. Uh, this is just like a crazy colored animal, too. It's really orange. This is a. Um, this is what you typically get when you have a, uh, a hypo motley. This one also has jungle in it, uh, but you can see how now we're, we're uh, just no connecting. 
saddles and just a nice striped tail and you can see this you can see the uh, scales here kind of show you that's jungle here is a hypo motley that's just a little bit older uh, the colors starting to come in um, and you can just see how uh, that hypo gene has kicked in and it's just really enhanced red this is a uh, albino motley uh, so you've got a, a recessive and then an incomplete uh, dominant trait there um, so most of them aren't as orange as this particular one uh, but this litter came from a, a special line of pastel which is uh, enhances the color so uh, you get a, just a really great looking uh, animal this is a uh, jungle motley so you can see now the jungle gene has instead of having circles it's more of a uh, blocky pattern through here and it's broken it up block 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 and then it just messes with the tail and it just kind of fades that tail out it's a pretty cool look and this is a hypo jungle uh, you can see the stripe you can still see all that little light scales right through there and uh, just does some really cool stuff and its sister another hypo uh, jungle and you can see the color is even different this one's like brick red the other one was orange um, it's got the zigzaggies here just a really uh, really cool animal <clears throat> this one here is a um, a super hypo jungle so two copies of the hypo gene and then the jungle gene um, see the thinned out saddles thinned out and then the zigzaggy pattern here and you see no black on the tail it's like a candy cane no black which is what you want and then this one had a really cool like missile on its head pretty cool and that's another picture of the uh, the jungle motley this is a hypo uh, jungle motley albino so it's a junglo motley um, it's four genes um, they're really hard to make and um, I definitely uh, kept this one so And that's the same picture as before. This one here is a uh, anatheristic motley that I produced this year, so it's you know a lot darker. Uh, the eyes are darker. Just the overall pattern. There's no red in it, um, so that that's going to be a pretty cool animal. And this one here is a snow motley, so it's an albino anery motley. So <clears throat> they, they, you, you're taking out the uh, black pigment and you're taking out the red pigment. So you basically just get a white snake, which is really cool. Um, it's the first year I've produced anery stuff. I just got lucky and, and got the right combo together. Um, and I hit, I hit one, so... Here is an example of three motleys, uh, different genetics. Um, you've got just an albino motley, and you've got an anatheristic motley, and then you've got a snow motley. So this is just shows you what you can get out of different animals. It's just really a lot of fun. This is a, an arabesque uh, boa that um, I produced this year. Um, it just it, it does some cool things. It's different pattern, especially towards the tail. Um, 
it's connecting saddles um, and here's an albino arabesque it is also an incomplete dominant trait so if you breed an arabesque to a normal you're gonna get 50% uh, arabesque even though I didn't get 50% I only got four out of the entire litter um, but that's just the odds so <clears throat> here's a picture of the arabesque with just a normal albino and you can see the uh, you know the just a different color uh, that the arabesque has the, the more you know, pink and and orange uh, just because of that different gene okay this is an Aztec boa that I picked up uh, last year um, I've got two of them now uh, I really like the pattern uh, I think it's gonna do some amazing things uh, with the hypogene and albino gene um, it's uh, it's an also an incomplete dominant trait um, so you breed this to a normal you're gonna get 50 50 and uh, you can just see that different pattern so there's circles all the way down it's really really cool this is a uh, IMG boa that I picked up uh, last year it stands for increasing melon gene I believe uh, which just means as this animal gets older, uh, the melon, the black, is going to come out, and um, it's just going to turn black. So this is when I first bought it. You can see just a little, little black here and a little black here, and uh, and as it gets older, it just gets a little darker, and now you can just see it just it's getting darker. So. Uh, will this animal get solid black? I don't think so. It's got the hypogene in it, which actually fights against that. Uh, but it will, uh, it will get pretty dark. So, pretty excited about that. And last but not least is a uh, VPI albino. It's a different kind of albino. Uh, it just kind of lightens the animal up. Uh, really, really cool looking. Um, I can't wait to. Uh, get some litters out of my VPI stuff uh, so I can start mixing and matching all the same uh, combos that I showed you earlier but with the VPI it gives it just a little bit different look so it's pretty exciting um, so I can't wait to work with that so that's pretty much uh, everything I've got right now and I'm working with um, always picking up new projects and maybe I'll update this video at some time but I hope you enjoyed it if you have any comments just leave them in the uh, comment section and I'll answer them and thanks for watching